So it's like for a record label, like the music business model of like studios, right? Like you got up and coming artists that use studios, but then like Sony has their own studio or they might book a studio for a month for a major artist to just record his album or whatever. As the landscape of podcasting starts to get more refined and less and less people are participating in the landscape, because that's what's going to happen, right? It's going to be less people participating over the course of time. I disagree. I don't think that's true. I disagree. I heard you say that. Why do you think that's... Everybody... Wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be famous. <laughs> no, everybody but, but, wants to be heard. when they realize that it's almost impossible to have a successful podcast. But right? it's not about... That's... See, you and I are thinking the same thing. People do know how difficult that is, but they don't care, Rashad. They just want to have a successful Instagram page. They just want to have a successful TikTok. But, but I don't... No, no, truly. But the for how long... How, here, but I promise... You see, some, you see yeah. so many people start podcasts and then six months later, they're they not doing it no more, right? Sure. It's like, who wants to be consistent in doing something if you're not making no money? Or is it like a rotational thing, right? As soon as that person's tired, there's a new person that's... Semi, yes. Like, there's so many podcasts <laughs> that we person. don't have anymore. Right. That literally, when we started our new space, I reached out to some people like, hey, you know, come through. We haven't seen you in a while, blah, blah, blah. And they don't have a show anymore. And it is what it is. But, bro, every day we're doing tours for someone who's new. Yeah. But the thing is, I know what you're saying. These people want to make clips. That, to me, is the new wave. And that actually still exists in this business model. People want their Instagram to have clips of them either talking to camera. They just want to be this influential person. They want a thought leader, so to speak, right? Like, even one of our engineers, Wolf, shout out to Wolf. I've been joking, like, nigga, when did you become Dr. Umar? When, <laughs> between clients, you know, he get on the mic and he just start saying shit, but now people know him for that. I got a new show, y'all. <laughs> I don't, like, and that's the thing, right? It's like, it doesn't even have to be a podcast name. It's just the content. People really... We are in the era of that. But how we survive as a podcast industry when 95% of people aren't making money? Like, if you can't, nobody's buying podcast. Like, you you buy music, you stream it, mm -hmm. right? No, you don't stream podcasts. You get it for free, right? So it, the model itself is, is not a sustainable model. Well, people shouldn't be making That's podcasts true. Yeah. to make I would ad say money, though. The, I, I, the I percentage just, thing, even more so, is right. How, how many people make music a day? There's... Over 300,000 songs that are uploaded every day. Probably less than, maybe 1% of the people that actually put out these songs and make something from it. But they They're not quitting their day jobs. They love doing it. Like, there are some people that actually just enjoy meeting up with their friends and talking behind a mic. Even if they're not making money from it, it's like, some people get into it for money. Some people get into it just for the love. Some people like just to hang. Yes. And there are a lot of shows that make little money, maybe not big money, it's not y'all money, but there are shows because almost every streaming service, they put the uh, dynamic ads in it. And so it's like, they're getting little dollars here and there. It's enough to just pay for the studio time and keep going. I actually want to shout out a podcast that spends hella money in here. It's a podcast called Conversations with O. He gave me an amazing interview. His podcast isn't huge, but he's had some, he's had, you know, keys on there and uh, different like, just celebrities and influencers. And but he's one of those people that he has his nine to five. He's a teacher and they come back. And he back said to here. his we, we, students, we know. he brought us in for career day. And he said to his students, yeah, I have a podcast. Like, And he called it a hobby. I had no idea it was his hobby. The way that he treats that show, the money that he's spending with our studio, that really shocked me. Like, you're really investing in this hobby. But truth be told, he loves it. He's actually really brilliant at it. Sure, he hasn't been discovered in a large level yet, maybe. But like the fact that he's doing it because he loves it, that's how people end up fulfilling themselves. Mm. So like that podcaster is making the studio money and there's a hundred of Zoe. Zoe is just one that really sticks out to me because I think he's brilliant, but it's that type of shit. I also think when it comes to podcasting, for anybody that's listening that wants to make money on podcasting, advertisement, yes, horrible, earn your leisure. Those shows make podcast ad money. But if you're not there... That doesn't mean you can't make money. You have to go make the money. You cannot wait for some big entity to hit you up mm -hmm. and say, yo, start selling these undies or this water or these tampons. You need to be doing um, so uh, a BTS yeah. content, extra content, finding out what your fans love from you. For example, you guys always have a guest. If Rashad and Troy only did episodes alone shooting the shit, we would pay for that, right? because we never get to hear their personal lives. I want to hear more about your kids. Maybe we do in like little ways, but you know what I'm saying. It's the other kinds of shows. You're doing Blackout. 
sooner or later, if you put that on a paywall, you're already going to have those fans that watch it. You're going to have a certain percentage come over. And that's what happened with Horrible. Like, we only started Patreon because we didn't want to come out of pocket for video anymore to pay Alex. So Breaking where we were out. making 500 a month from <laughs> Patreon, yeah. now it's somewhere from like maybe 15 to 20, a thousand a month. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just extra content that our fans want from us. People love Mandy and I alone. Even though we might be fighting on a mic, that's what they want. So we get our ass on that Patreon and that's where you're going to see it. So like, it's figuring out what people like from you. And also when you're starting your show, you can't come out the gate with the Patreon, bro. <laughs> Y'all done just said, hey, my name is Zoe and my Patreon is this. Chill. Figure out. Disagree. Who... No, you're tripping. Disagree. You have disagree? to have a fan base because... first, Alex. You have to have a fan base You first. can do both. You can put out a portion of the episode live and then you can make a portion of it behind a paywall because people are just looking at, oh, I have to have a large number of followers and fans, but you don't. Like if you have 10 people subscribing to your Patreon, that's fucking what? That's like $150? Oh, how much is Patreon? It's like that's top tier. Okay, okay, that's top tier. Yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. regards even that that pays for your studio time. I mean, you know what? I will, I will, so I will like, agree with you to the half. Like I some content just... here, some there. But what I have learned, because I have another podcast for fact's sake that's now only behind Patreon. I did it for two years for free, and then it didn't grow to the degree of horrible. But we make bread on Patreon now, right? Because mm -hmm. maybe twenty percent of fans came over, and that's enough. Now. I just think that people are starting too much by asking for money. Deliver me the content first. Mm -hmm. Give me something to get excited for every Wednesday first. And we're so used to seeing Kickstarter, GoFundMe, Patreon. Chill, bro. Like, give me some shit I want to see. Get me used to this shit and then offer it to yeah. me behind the paywall. You got to become part of somebody's yeah. daily routine, their weekly routine. Absolutely. Now, you, now you're part of their life. Y'all know about consistency. Bro, if Mandy and I have a, I, I don't really think we have late uploads like ever. Maybe, maybe the YouTube guy, if he got sick one day and didn't upload that shit. Oh, them bitches are in the email. Where the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. So, but I do get what you're saying. The big money in podcasting is gone. It's like the big Rogan deals. Those are no more. And mm -hmm. so now, yes, I do think the popularity of everybody wanting to get rich, like the gold rush is done. So it's maybe not as popular to start a new show, but I still think like- It exists in scripted. It doesn't ex exist And exclusivity, they've taken that out, right? Even Rogue is not exclusive anymore. Yeah. And Call Me Daddy's not, they took the exclusivity out in the yeah. new deal. So that's going out too. Just because of what Spotify was spending, mm -hmm. how are we recouping? Yeah, they they weren't recouping, but- But, but I will tell you, seriously, the scripted money- Scripted what? Scripted. scripted podcast. And I'm working in scripted podcast with Kenya. That's how I know. Mm -hmm. I'm almost in awe of those budgets. What is a scripted podcast? A scripted podcast is a podcast that is shorter form. It's basically like an audio movie. It's not an audio book. You're not reading out words, but mm. you're listening to actors. You're hearing Foley. Foley is the sound. You're yeah. hearing, let's just say it's a restaurant scene. This is like Dateline, but audio? No. Like a uh, serial? I don't listen to serial, but is it a murder podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of the true crime it's acted ones out. are like true crime. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, like true sure. crime. Yeah, yeah. So um, a lot but of But they're giving like Kerry Washington yeah. has one, right? She's got yes. a big one. Um I'm trying to think of another one on Audible that's huge. Uh Charlemagne did some, right? He's got an Audible deal with Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. So like basically how it works is there's a full script like TV or film. But you're adding in more sounds and ways to figure out locations so that the audience knows. It's amazing. This is the romance ones. I listened to one with Demi Moore called Dirty Diana. I ain't getting paid from this shit. I'm telling you, phenomenal. I was invested in the tea. Her husband was cheating. You hear the, the footsteps. You hear him pick up the phone. And like, it, you don't need to see it because you could hear her say, what is that? Why are you grabbing that? But this is not like an audio book. No, it's not a book because they're not reading just words. Right. But so it's like the in between between mm -hmm. podcast and an audio book. So okay. it's like those are getting money in bigger deals because they are having bigger companies pay for them. You've got the actors, and there's so few of them. So we can find millions and millions of podcasts, but the scripted ones, maybe you've got you know a few hundred that are you know, that are great to go through. So people rotate those. And the advertisers are loving putting money into those because people are really sticking and following all the way through to listen. Mm. And they're also already behind paywalls. It costs so much to make them. You got to pay $10 on Audible to listen to them. So it's already there. It's already behind a paywall. I mean, you know, it's not free. 